There were three cars in the left turn lane on the opposite side of the street. The one in the middle was a cop in an SUV. He got a call for backup to hit an assist and run. He turned on his lights, briefly whooped the siren just once, and swung his SUV around the car in front of him and accelerated into the intersection. At the same time, my dad entered the intersection on his motorcycle. Some witnesses said that my dad threw down his bike. My dad always said that if you knew you were going to fall on your bike, the best thing to do was to get as low to the ground as possible. That way, you have a lesser distance to fall. I was proud of my dad when I read that, but also felt incredibly sad. As soon as my brother called me on November 19th and told me what had happened, I knew my dad had done nothing wrong. All witnesses interviewed agreed that my dad didn't stand a chance. I sobbed on the plane on, the, on my way back home. My father dying was unreal. Everything was unreal. Sitting in the passenger seat on the way home to my house from the airport, I looked at my neighborhood in a different light. The streets were darker, the lights lining the road giving little solace. The home I grew up in was turned into a mausoleum. The furniture, clothes, floor, everything seemed to be a shadow of a past life that I couldn't remember. It had been long since I'd been there, but my home was unrecognizable. Growing up, my dad consistently had helmet hair. Even hours after removing his helmet, his wispy strawberry blonde locks would stick up in all directions. At the urging of my mother, my dad would go to salons to try to get his tresses under control. He even had friends that were hairdressers who were familiar with his mop of hair. They tried all sorts of cuts and products, but nothing could be done. That was okay though. Us kids loved his hair. When we were little, our father would patiently sit and watch television while we played hairstylist. We put colorful scrunchies, sparkly breaths, and tiny plastic animal toys in his unruly locks and laughed. When we grew up, we still chuckled at our father's crazy hair, but at the same time appreciated it. It was wild and adventurous like his spirit, but soft like his heart. I got angry when people couldn't see what I saw in my father. One of my middle school classmates snickered when my dad came home and pulled off his helmet, revealing reddish curls sticking up every which way. Is your dad's hair always like that? She said between snickers. I could only glare back in response. Unlike my middle school friend, I thought that a rough around the edges look was cool. My dad had messy hair, dirt under his fingers, burns from motorcycle engines, and oil stained hands as a consequence of running a motorcycle shop. He didn't look like other kids' fathers. My dad would stride into my science fairs wearing his leather jacket, part of a t-shirt bearing the Triumph motorcycle logo. Other fathers wore button-down shirts, khaki slacks, and their hair was combed over either left or right. They were already sprouting hairs and growing saggy bellies. But my dad retained a handsome, youthful look. I was proud of the way he stood out as he made a beeline to meet me at the science project he helped me build. My father's hair started thinning as is expected of age. Stress from running a shop during a recession had partly had to do with it. He'd come home crabby and quick to argue. He'd have dramatic reactions to small things, like people cutting him off in his car. But things got better. He'd become more patient and friendly. He'd chat up servers when we, went out, when we went out to eat, asking them where they were from and what their favorite thing on the menu was. He wanted to be there a long time for us kids. My dad always ate well and exercised, but now he was actually starting to go to the doctor and taking medicine for his cholesterol. He was on his way towards the pharmacy to get the medicine he stopped avoiding the day the accident happened. We went to the same funeral home my neighbors had used for their grandmother's deaths. While picking from funeral packages A, B, C, or D, I felt like we were pretending to have a funeral. I floated in this out-of-body experience. My father's body was delivered to the mortuary where they did whatever they needed to do to make him presentable. The day before the funeral, my mom got a call. They offered to let us see him privately before the funeral. The mortuary played soft keyboard music when we arrived. It was out of place considering my dad loved the Rolling Stones and Bob Marley. I watched my mother walk down the aisles of the chapel to where my father was. I took the plunge and tiptoed to the front of the chapel myself. 
there was way too much makeup on his face. He was still wearing a suit instead of his usual t-shirt and jeans. At the touch, he was cold. His hair was combed and swept to the side. He didn't look like himself. I turned and hid my face in my cousin's shirt. He doesn't look like him, I said. They never do, my cousin replied. Come here, said my mom. If you touch his hands, they feel cold like when he came home after riding in the rain. His hair, it's still soft. I turned around to face my poor father again. I touched his hands and tried to pretend it was a cold, rainy night, and my father had just come home on his motorcycle. On nights like that, he always thought it'd be funny to come up to us and touch our cheeks with his freezing hands. This body felt like my dad for a moment, but it required too much pretending. I just wanted to feel like I was with my father again. I touched his hair. His hair was the only thing throughout this miserable week that felt real. It still felt soft and wispy like I remember. I felt a sense of comfort, finally. I felt like I was with my father. At that moment, it was just us, mom, dad, sister, brother, and my cousin, together, alone at last. No friends, no funeral directors, no neighbors, just us. The rest of the week felt like we were just going through motions, and the reality of it was that we were. The whole process of the memorial, the funeral procession, the burial, that was for the people that loved my father but didn't know him like we knew him. Touching his hair was the only way I felt like I could say goodbye. One last time. Ladies and gentlemen, Laura M.